where you learn about expanding. So the next logical thing is factorizing. Whenever you're factorizing, the very first thing you always do is look for the common factor first, always. Then the number of terms it has determines the strategy you might try. So two terms, not a heck of a lot. I mean, you've tried the common factor. Oh, maybe it's the difference of two squares. So is it? Uh, could be some difference of two cubes. We'll talk more about that later. Three terms, is it one of those quadratic trinomials? Yeah, well, multiplies together to add and together. Is it something like that? Four terms. Ah, oh, can I try grouping in pairs with this? So these are the sorts of techniques that we might try. Not exactly a mind-blowing example here, but for the sake of an example, common factor. Remember, factorizing is simply dividing by the common factor. That's what factorizing is. So some people go, oh, hang on, when I take it out, what am I left with? Just divide by whatever you've taken out of the parentheses. So I see, as I said, not exactly mind-blowing. AX plus BX, hmm, what do they got in common? X. So what do you get left with when you divide by X? You, you get A plus B. 5x squared minus 10x. So what do we do here? Common factor is 5x. Very common mistake, of course, is just to take one of the common factors out, not both of them. So yes, indeed, there are two common factors there, the 5 and the x. Uh-oh, mx minus n. Oh, okay, no worries. Look, the first two x, then the, ah, oh, damn, no x. Oh, hang on a sec. Two of them have got m, oh, damn. Oh, that's all right. Two of them have got what? Oh, damn. Ah, oh, two of them have got it. Oh, damn. Grouping in pairs, that's the technique obviously we're going to use. Really is just pulling out common factors, but doing it two terms at a time. Up to you which pair. If it doesn't work, try a different pair. So I'm going to go, well, the first two have got a common factor of x, and the second two, notice I took out a common factor of negative y there. Because the key to this method is making sure what's inside the uh, parentheses is the same. So if I had just taken out y instead of minus y, I would have had negative m plus n. No good. I want them to be the same because now I can look at that and say, what do they have in common? Well, they have m minus n in common. So now it's a common factor question. And then what am I left with? Well, if I divided by the common factor, the first one would become x, the second one would become negative y. So that's what's in the second parentheses. Difference of two squares then, maybe it's difference of two squares. So remember, we just did that, uh, but when we we're expanding. So logically the reverse should work as well. So can I spot that pattern? So I see 16x squared minus one. Oh, well, that's easy. First one's something squared, so is the second one. Whether you put the minus first or the plus first doesn't matter. Here you go, random survey. Who would put the minus first? How many people go for the minus first? Oh, only one? So do I assume then the rest would tend to, if they're writing this down, they'd probably put the plus first? Is that what everyone's saying? They are both correct, of course. Which one's more correct? You should be saying minus right now because that's what I did. Uh, <laughs> it is actually the minus one's more correct. It doesn't matter though, don't panic. It doesn't matter. 3y squared minus 75. Hang on. How do I factorize this? Three's not something squared. 75 is not something squared. Take out the three. Take out the three, the common factor. Always look for the common factor first. Now we've got the difference of two squares. Always look for the common factor first. Uh-oh. Four terms. Grouping in pairs, but this time the pairs are a little bit different in that the second pair is the difference of two squares. But we can still use the idea. Because I've got, for the first pair, 5 outside x minus y. And for the second one, x minus y, x plus y. And now I've got two things. What do they have in common? x minus y. So I divide by the x minus y. What am I left with? 5 plus x plus y. There it is, factorised. Quadratics. Monics are, of course, the easiest type. And it comes from this idea. If I was to expand it out, then the number at the end is always going to be a times b, and the one in the middle is always going to be a plus b. So I'm looking for that combination. Multiplies together give 18, adds together give 9. 
Oh, six and three. What do you know? Six and three. So yeah. So again, that's more going on in your head. So six and three. X plus six. X plus three. Multiplies together to get three. Adds to get negative four. Hang on a sec. Got to think about that. Multiplies together to give a positive number. Adds together to give a negative number. So both numbers must be negative. It's the only possibility. So we get minus three minus one. Again, don't worry about the whys. Who cares? It's the numbers that are important here. Technically, what we're saying is what multiplies together to give 4y squared, what adds together to give minus 5y. But again, the y's don't matter. It's the numbers. Uh, multiplies together to give 4. Oh, it's just 1 and 4, isn't it? But they add together to give negative, so they've both got to be negative. But instead of writing down minus 1 and minus 4, I write down minus 1y, minus 4y. Splitting the middle. I love splitting the middle. I think it's a great technique. How do you do this? Well, how many people would go cross method? Yeah, most people do. It's been drummed into you, hasn't it? Okay. How many people go splitting the middle? How many people have got no idea what I'm talking about when I say splitting the middle? Let me show you what splitting the middle is. The reason I like splitting the middle is it keeps the same idea as the other ones we were doing. What multiplies together to give, what adds together to give. The difference is, when I say what multiplies together to give, I'm not going to say negative 7. I multiply the constant by the coefficient of x squared. So for this one, what multiplies together to give negative 21, that's negative 7 times 3, adds together to give 4. Multiplies together to give a negative number, adds together to give a positive number. One's got to be positive. One's got to be negative. The bigger number has to be the positive number because we're adding them together to get positive. So what is that going to be? Seven and three? Oh, look, it's right there. Seven and three. Okay, so what do we do? That middle term, we split it into those two numbers, splitting the middle term. And now it becomes a grouping in pairs question. So the first two, I'm going to go, oh, it's 3x x minus 1, and then 7x minus 1. Oh, I've got a common factor of x minus 1, 3x plus 7. So I say the reason I like it is it keeps the same idea that I'm used to using and I'm very comfortable with. Let's try another one. Instead of saying multiplies together to give negative 12, we're going to say negative 24. Multiplies together to give a negative number. Adds together to give a negative number. So we've got a positive, we've got a negative, but this time the negative number is going to be the bigger of the numbers because I've got to be left with it. Oh, factors of 24, what do we got? Going to have a difference of 5. 8 and 3. 8 and 3 got a difference of 5. I said the bigger one's the negative one, didn't I? So let's split it. Minus 8 plus 3. Group in pairs. Put them back together. There's our answer. So that's splitting the middle. I personally think it's far superior than the cross method. Because I, I personally think the cross method is like a lot of just guessing. I'll try this. Ah, oh, it didn't work. I'll try this. Oh, it didn't work. <laughs> so depending on the numbers you get. Alrighty. Whoa, welcome back. <laughs>